the world is changing very fast the geopolitical shifts are changing very fast in terms of uh, how the world aligns itself uh, we saw the pandemic and then of course the russian invasion of ukraine with me is the austrian foreign minister who is here in delhi and he is the first foreign minister to visit delhi since the invasion started and uh, let's talk about the many things and especially the focus area what brings you here to delhi uh, at a time when we have seen the invasion but also the geopolitical shifts changing very fast well actually i'm first i'm happy to be here i grew up in india and I'm, it's sort of a homecoming to a certain degree and secondly yes we have something we thought never possible we have war again in europe and we have a brutal invasion of russia in ukraine and this is a country actually near neighboring austria from seen from vienna the capital of austria the border of ukraine is closer than the westernmost part of our country and we are not a big country so as you said we are witnessing an earthquake tectonic shifts are taking place and uh, while witnessing that we have to realize that we should not only focus on ukraine this is not european war this is a war the shock waves will be felt all around the globe also in south asia also in india mm. and first india is always has always been a key partner in a very geopolitically important region and we have to look at the indo-pacific region we have to see what is going on here we have to see what is what are the reasons what is china going to take out of this conflict we see in europe as a message and i believe politics won't be the same anymore in the next coming in the coming years mm -hmm. uh, you met with the indian external affairs minister how was your conversation what were the key issues that were discussed and of course ukraine was perhaps a major component of that discussion yes we discussed uh, obviously the situation going on in in europe the possible effects uh, for asia and for india in particular but we also discussed regional issues i had to spend the last couple of days in pakistan and uh, uh, this is for us a very important region it is a important region worldwide it is a, a key region if we want to have stability uh, uh, in the wider asia region and uh, we discussed bilateral issues too i'm accompanied by a larger business delegation and believe there's a huge potential business wise between austria and india and the whole aim of this trip is to put austria more firmly on the political and economic map of india so to say and vice versa to put india more firmly on our uh, economic and political map in austria mm. how do you see india stands when it comes to the ukraine crisis well i mean for us it's something which is happening in the neighborhood it's a sh it's a shock basically we thought that this would won't happen again we see tanks moving into a country invading it and i believe everybody um, has to realize that this is a frontal attack on the international security architecture we have been building up after the second world war and after the fall of the iron curtain and this is something that can leave nobody indifferent because everybody will be touched mm -hmm. uh if we talk about the talks which are happening between uh, ukraine and russia there is talk of an austrian model how do you see this development as what's your reaction about the austrian model of neutrality being discussed between ukraine and russia well the, yes it worked for us i have to say um uh, people might not know the indian audience that austria after the second world war was occupied for 10 years by the allies meaning the brits the americans the french and the red army the soviet union at the time and we managed to get a state treaty and declared ourselves neutral and everybody pulled out as a consequence um, but this is something which was probably new, unique to austria and every country every people has to take its own their own path and i have to say the Ukrainians are struggling, they're fighting, and uh, the courage is impressive. Um, and I think you have to be very careful to suggest to them in this moment when they're being attacked from outside, listen guys, get neutral and then everything is over. This is something the Ukrainians themselves have to decide and we have to respect their own decision. Mm -hmm. uh, there are also suggestions by various countries, including by France, of an EU army. What do you think about this suggestion by President Macron? Well, if we look at the history of European integration, at the very beginning of the history, there was the idea of having a defense union, uh, including possibly an EU army. And this idea has never dissipated, it never disappeared. And I think what uh, we are witnessing now is, you could call it a geopolitical shock for Europe. Uh, we have been a very peaceful, very um, uh, a force being um, focused on economic affairs. But in the last two and three weeks, we have taken a very geopolitical stance. And I believe this will not go away. And 
yes, to get to be more resilient, uh, also as far as military means are concerned, is a topic which is very much in the present, in the upfront now, in the political debate. And you have seen countries like Germany and even Austria has decided to increase defense spending. So that is an immediate re reaction to the situation in Ukraine. Uh, an EU army could be at the very end of this development. For us as neutral country, Austria is by constitution a neutral country. We would not prevent such a development, but we might not be part of an EU army at the end, because that's the core issue of being neutral. Mm -hmm. and, and you haven't allowed the weapons to be transferred to Ukraine from your territory as part of your neutrality? No, no, we have allowed it. Um, we have a system that says if there's an international decision, either by the EU, by the OSCE, or by the UN, then uh, we can allow transit through the Austrian uh, territory and we have a, this decision, uh, a foreign policy decision by the European Union, so we're not preventing any kind of transport. And uh, as far as politically uh, uh, concerned, Austria is not neutral. We are neutral in military terms, we're not neutral politically. We have never been since 1955. We know exactly where we stand. We stand on the side of international law, of humanitarian law and of uh, rules-based international order. Mm -hmm. um, since you are here in Delhi, there is a big worry about the Chinese aggressiveness, about the Indo-Pacific being changed. Do you see implications here because of the Ukraine crisis? Do you see uh, a more aggressive China and what can Austria do in terms of strengthening the very concept of Indo-Pacific? I mean, I believe what we are witnessing is uh, the fact that Putin miscalculated. He thought that the Ukrainians won't put up a fight and he thought the West won't react strongly. Well, he was wrong on both accounts. Um, and I believe the fact that the West is standing together so firmly, the United States, Canada, Australia, and the European Union, other countries, like-minded countries, has, a, I believe, a very strong message for everybody on this planet, mm -hmm. that no, if you attack the international rules-based order, we won't stand by idly and simply watch. There will be a reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, so my final question to you is, uh, uh, you are here in Delhi, it's after 15 years that uh, Austrian foreign minister is here in Delhi. How do you see your visit uh, um, helping strengthen the relationship, whether it's cultural terms, whether it is business terms, or whether it's people-to-people -people relationship? Well, actually, I'm extremely pleased because I'm, I'm accompanied by nearly 20 business people, and we already uh, will conclude today the first contract. So this is something, a visit that has very concrete results, and I believe Austrian companies and businesses can bring a lot to India on green technology, infrastructure, railroads, all the rest. We are top leaders on this planet. We have hidden champions, so to say. And I believe there's a very mutual beneficial relationship which could be you know, strengthened and increased in the next couple of years. And I myself very impressed. The last time, 15 years ago, when the Austrian foreign minister visited India, I was part of the delegation. I was the spokesperson then of the minister. And the changes are impressive. Mm -hmm. and uh, um, to the better. And uh, I have a soft spot for India, that's obvious, but I'm, I'm seeing the progress and I believe Austrian companies and also culturally wise, we could be part of this uh, development and this beautiful country. Mm -hmm. You said soft spot and you also talked about you growing. If you can talk about that to our viewers because really that any uh, foreign minister has an India connect. Well, I, I, as a very small kid, uh, I've spent five years here I left it at the age of nine, but that's sufficient to, you know, to get the flavor, the feeling, the colors, the smells, the taste, and so on. And I had the opportunity, luckily, uh, the day before yesterday, to visit some of the places where I have been playing as a kid. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, luckily, they remain uh, unchanged, like the Lodi Garden, where I played as a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's, as I said at the beginning, a homecoming to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a country which is very attaching. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion and talking about your memories and, of course, uh, uh, the big worry which is here in South Asia and uh, Europe, that's the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Thank you so much, sir. So that was uh, the Austrian foreign minister speaking to Vion exclusively on a range of subjects and talking about how big this geopolitical earthquake is, not only for Europe, but for the world, the Russian invasion of Ukraine. With video journalist Neeraj Patel, Siddhan Sibul for Vion in New Delhi.